Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we are going to talk about integer partitioning. Uh, so according to number theory and combinatorics, a partition of a positive integer is a way of writing the number as a sum of multiple positive integers. Uh, for example, if we take a positive integer number like 4, we can express 4 as 4, uh, 3 plus 1, 2 plus 2, um, I don't know, 2 plus 1 plus 1, and... Uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Now, we also count the value of the integer itself as a separate combination. Hence, the number of integer partition, uh, partitions for 4 are 5, or p of n, or p of 4, is 5. Um, if you observe um, here, 2 plus 1 plus 1 can also be represented as 1 plus 1 plus 2, or uh, 1 plus 2 plus 1. But in this algorithm, we will not consider the order in which the numbers occur, but the values of the numbers themselves. So basically, order is not important. Another way of thinking about this is that we will consider combinations and not permutations. The integer partition algorithm helps you to calculate the number of combinations that are available for a particular number. For example, if you pass 4 into the algorithm, you'll get 5 as the answer. As five combinations are available or integer partitions are available for four. Um, let's take a closer look at how this algorithm actually generates the combinations for the partition of an integer. Now, mind you, uh, this is more of a coding tutorial, so I'm not going to go very in depth into the algorithm completely, but I'll link a video in the description where you can actually see in depth explanation for how the algorithm works. But I want to cover enough so that you can understand how the, um, the, the program works. Um, so we do this by creating a 2D array, or another name for it could be a matrix. So we call this the partition matrix. So we create a partition matrix, let's say for example, for number five, it will look something like this. So if you observe, we start from zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So there are actually six rows and six columns. Now you might be wondering if it was 5, it should be 5 by 5, right? Well, yeah, but you want to include the number 5 in this case. Uh, just a tidbit of information. Uh, in this matrix, uh, the horizontal or Y indexes denote the sum. Okay, the sum, you know, the value which you're going to add, uh, which you're going to get after you add actually, that we have to create and the vertical indexes or X denote the summons which help us generate the sum. Now, if you don't know what a summoned is, a summoned is, you know, summons are the actual numbers that you add to get the sum. For example, if you add one plus three, which gives you four, um, one and three are the summons and four is the sum. So basically we are going to use the vertical summons to generate the horizontal sums. Um, the algorithm that we use here is based on dynamic programming. The paradigm by which dynamic programming operates is by breaking the bigger problem into smaller problems, then solving those problems and then storing the results obtained. The results can then be fetched to, you know, later help solve the bigger problem. Uh, that is exactly what we are going to do in this case. Now, as the first index of Y is zero, um, so we need to create a sum of zero from the first summoned in X, uh, which is also zero. The number of combinations in which we can achieve zero from zero is obviously one, because zero has no value and cannot be broken down any further. So we write one over there. The next sum that we need to create um, from zero is one. Now, if you think about it, that is actually kind of impossible because zero literally has no value. This means that there are no combinations that will lead us to create one from zero. Similarly, if we consider the next sums to create from zero, that is two, three, four, and five in the columns, they will also suffer the same fate because you cannot create either of them from zero. Hence, the number of combinations there will also be are zero. Hence, our first uh, row is solved. That is literally the first row. Um, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. The way we solve the next row is also interesting because now we not only have one, but actually two numbers to choose from, which are zero and one. Yes, you go from top and bottom. You don't choose only the current summon, but you also choose the ones that come previous to it. 
to create our sum. Um, for the first number, we have to create a sum of zero from zero comma one. The tricky part here is that there is no way you can create a sum of zero from one again. So the only way to do this is uh, with zero, which gives us only one combination because zero is equal to zero. Next, we create one from zero comma one. We cannot create one from zero, but we can create one from one. Hence, that is our single combination, okay? Similarly, we can create two from zero comma one in only one way, which is one plus one, because the only other available number to us is zero. The reason we are using two ones in this case is because we assume in this algorithm that we have an unlimited supply of summons, which in this particular case was using multiple ones for creating our combinations. Same goes for three, which is one plus one plus one. Uh, same goes for four, which is one plus one plus one plus one and five which is one plus one plus one plus one plus one, respectively. That was a lot of ones. If you observe, the entire row is filled with ones, and now we can move forward to the next row. In the next row, we have access to the summons zero, one, and two. As you remember, we also consider the previous summons. So to create the first number, we need to generate zero from zero, one, and two. Now, we know for a fact that we will, be, we will not be able to use uh, two or one in this case to create the sum. And this is simply because two and one are bigger than zero. So there is in this case, um, you know, only one combination as seen previously, but we can actually use a shortcut and not have to logically assess this every single time as we have the answers to the previous cases stored in the partition matrix, hashtag dynamic programming. So the shortcut basically is if the sum is less than the summoned considered, just fill the empty field considered by the value directly above it. Hence, we fill two comma zero with one and we fill two comma one with one, considering the fact that the summons are greater than the sum. So now we are at a point where we need to create two from zero, one and two. So the algorithm states uh, that to tackle this sort of a field, find the combinations excluding the current summoned then find the combinations including the current summoned and then the total combinations will be the sum of both the above you know excluding and including summons so the first um, so first we need to find the combinations excluding the current summoned which in this case is 2 so we need to find the combinations to create 2 from 0 comma 1 um, here is where we excluded 2 the fact that we are using dynamic programming helps us immensely in this case because if you are paying attention, we already have the answer to this sitting in the field uh, 1, 2, which is 1. Now, if uh, we were to include 2 in the set, we would need to generate 2 from 0, 1, and 2. Now, we can generate an equation like uh, 2 plus 0 is equal to 2, always use the bigger number, which means that we only need to find the number of ways in which we can generate 0 from 0, 1, and 2. This combination has already been solved and is ready at the field two comma zero, which is one. By adding the excluded and included values for generating two from zero comma one comma two, we get the answer one plus one, which is two. Um, so we fill the field two comma two with two. Similarly, now we have to generate three from zero comma one comma two. Hence, we use the same principles of exclusion and inclusion and addition. Now, there is another shortcut that we can use in this case. And that is the fact that during step, the steps of exclusion of the current summoned, which in this case is generating three from zero comma one, if you observe closely, notice that the number that we always end up copying is always above the current field considered. Hence, the algorithm states that the combinations of excluding the current summoned are present above the current field that you're considering to fill. So in this field that we are currently considering, the excluded combinations are one. For the included combinations, we need to create three from zero comma one comma two. Now the, the only ways, the ways in which we can do this is two plus one, which is equal to three. Remember that we have an unlimited supply of summons always. 
So the number of combinations needed are generating one from 0, 0,1, 1, 2. So the number of combinations for that is already calculated, hashtag dynamic programming at the field, 2, 1, which is 1. So the total combinations become 1 plus 1, which is 2. Hence the field 2, 3 in the partition matrix is filled with 2. The next field, 2, 4, um, needs to be filled with the combinations of generating 4 from 0, 1, 2. Using the excluding uh, shortcut, we know that the first addition value is 1. In order to generate the including addition value, we can use, as usual, uh, you know, take 2 plus 2 equal to 4 and try to find the combinations for generating 2 from 0, 1, 2. Or we can use another shortcut. This shortcut generates the second addition value. The combinations of including the current summoned can be calculated by subtracting the current sum from the current summoned, which would give us um, an integer which, let's say, we denote as x. The number of combinations in the value at the field, current summoned, comma, x of the partition matrix is our answer. In this case, the x value will be 4 minus 2, which is 2. So the field 2, comma, 2 is, you know, 2. That's what we fill it by. Hence, we get the values 1 plus 2, which is 3. Um, so the field 2 comma 4 is populated by 3. Uh, the reason we use these three shortcuts is to enable us to write code for generating the partition matrix using this algorithm. So the algorithm is basically composed of three shortcuts which we have mentioned above or we talked about. Similarly, we can compute all of the other fields using these shortcuts. Let's take a quick look at the code now. The function integer partition takes a number and returns the total number of integer partitions, uh, you know, combinations generated from that number. So we have this function over here, def integer partition, and it takes a number. So what we do initially directly is basically increment the number by one. So the incrementing basically means that we are able to use the original number as an index in the matrix. So I want to use, so we basically want to use the number as an index in the matrix. So we increment it by one, as you saw in the above examples, uh, having, you know, more, more uh, one more row and one more column instead of one less. For example, if the original value of the number passed was four, we would only consider zero, one, two, and three in the range function. So instead of, instead of you know, adding plus one to every range function or every for loop, uh, we can just add a plus one to the number itself and then decrement it later once the processing is done. Uh, the next part is we need to have uh, we need to create the partition matrix. So this line over here, partition matrix is equal to uh, you know zero times number for x in range of number, basically creates. Uh, so this is Python's way of basically creating a partition matrix or a 2D array that we can use it as a matrix. Now creating a partition matrix uh, is basically important because we want to solve it using dynamic programming. The line mentioned below creates the partition matrix that is number by number in width and height. So if you write five in place of number, you basically create something that is five by five, or you know, um, that's what basically happens. Um, the next part is basically, now, now, now that we have solved an example, uh, you would have realized that the first column of the partition matrix is always one. Um, hence, this is what we are setting up here. The summoned index is the value in the for loop which goes from the range zero to number, excluding number, of course. The, the first index is always row selection and the second value is always column selection in a 2D array. Um, so for a summoned index in range of zero comma number, partition matrix of summoned comma zero uh, is equal to one. So the next, uh, the nested loops over here will apply the algorithms that we discussed in the examples, the shortcuts, if you may. The summoned index indicates the vertical index of the partition matrix and the number index, uh, number index indicates the horizontal index of the partition matrix. A horizontal means sum and vertical means summoned. We start the loop from one simply because uh, we have already set the values for the first row and the first column in the previous steps. Uh, so for summoned index in range of one comma number, it starts from one because you know, we have already set the other values. For number index in range of one comma number, if summoned index is greater than number index. Now, if the summoned is greater than the sum, we just copy the values in the field above. You know, you copy the values from the field above. The coordinates for the values in this field will be summoned index minus one. Re remember, summoned is a uh, row selection. Oh, sorry, summoned is a, uh, yeah, row selection. 
and number index is column selection. So you want to go one previous row, so you go summon index minus one. So this, the first one is row selection, and the second one is com uh, column selection. Hence, that's what you're doing over here, just copying that value. Else, what basically happens is if the summoned is not greater than the sum, we find the combinations that include the current summoned and exclude the current summoned, as we saw in the shortcut. We have these shortcuts available for finding them with the algorithm. For excluding the current summoned, we just copy the value uh, above it as usual. So for that, you, you already have written the code. So combos without summon will basically have partition matrix of summoned index minus one, which is a row selection, and then the number index, which is the sum itself. And for including the summoned, we subtract the current sum, which, is, uh, which in this case is the number index from the summoned index, and that becomes our column indicator. Uh, using the summoned index as our row indicator, we get our field value as summoned index, um, comma, number index minus summoned index. So a row selection and a column selection is taken care of, and combos with someone will basically have that value. If you actually write this out on a piece of paper, you'll understand what exactly it means. Hence, we fill the value at the partition matrix summoned index, comma, number index, by adding the combos without summoned and combos with summoned to get our answer. Hence, partition matrix will contain combos without summoned and combos with summoned. Hence, um, we're done with the algorithm, and this basically runs in a for loop. Actually, it's a double for loop. It's a nested for loop, actually. And uh, hence, after that, we basically deduct number equal number minus one because we want to include number inside of our indexes, and then you return partition matrix of number, comma number to get this is how it basically works. It returns the number of combinations you actually have. Now, if I run this algorithm, you'll basically see that I have uh, the value of seven. Seven pops up for five, and that's the correct answer. So this is how the algorithm works. I know this was a bit uh, too much to take in, but you can always, you know, rewatch the video. It makes sense. It it will take a little bit of time. I've also included the comments in the in the description below. Like it's heavily commented. The code it's crazy. Like this is probably the most heaviest commented code I've ever written. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and send this video to anybody who needs help with integer partitioning. I've also included a, a video, a theory video in the description below so that you can actually get uh, some more value out of it. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.